band place. All right, this is Bruce's video. We were talking about turnarounds, and you asked me, uh, uh, so the turnaround that we did first was this one on the fifth string, fifth fret, and the third string, fourth fret. And I usually use the third string on the fifth, uh, fifth fret, fifth string, and the second finger on the uh, fourth fret, third string. Now, we just talked about that. You don't have to use those fingers. One time you might use the, the pair of fingers for one thing, and then the next time, depending upon where you have to go to afterwards, you might use different fingers. So anyway, this is what I usually do. I don't even think about it anymore. So. I can break them off like that. I can hit the strings singly. Fifth string, third string, fifth string, fifth string, third string, fifth string, fifth string, third string, fifth string. And then I'm back at the end. And then we talked about this one. Sliding up on the sixth string to the third of the E, which is the G sharp. Or we can hit the E, open E first and go. And then when we get to that, the second finger down on this uh, second fret fifth string, which so we can use, we can get to that B7 in this case anyway. And that's going to be worse. All right, and some songs will go. Well, let's see, that's that's always going to be. Worse. So I'm going to play the turnaround. And also, we wanted to make sure that we said. That that uh, descending or it's sometimes ascend, ascending stuff, the, the, the half steps that are that turn around that either go up or down, they start on two. We talked about that because uh, um, otherwise you're going to be not in the right place when it finally comes around. So we're going to go like this from down from the five and the key of E. One, two, three, four, A, two. Start the turn. One, two, three, and then we start again. And the verse starts again. And we could do that in A, same thing with A. I'm going to do it in A now, coming down from the five, which is E in this case. These are the fourth and second strings in the fifth fret. And then our, we got, if we use our index finger to play that A chord, we got our third finger here ready to go. At the fourth fret. And then, and then we want to use what I did called crowding. Use it, instead of using this second finger here, where we can't, we won't be able to do a full E chord. I'm going to crowd this third finger in here so I can go. Crowd. Alright. And then we did the D turnaround too. I'm just going to come down from the... I will come down from the 5 again like the others. If the 5 of D is A, so I'm going to go down from A. I think we did. A, we started it with the third and fourth fingers. I mean, it doesn't matter what fingers you do it. Just make sure you're playing the third and for the D, the third and the first strings at the fifth fret. And what I we ended up doing was using the the index finger bar because because when we get down here and move it here, now all we got to do is take that second finger, put it on the second string. Third fret, and then we got a D chord, and we didn't move anything hardly, right? All the way down from the fifth fret, sliding with the index finger, then, and then we got we got that third finger again, ready for the fourth fret, which is the third. And we're walking up, one half.
last step at a time to the five, which is the A. me about the B when we talked about the harmonized things like the harmonized E, uh, uh, vamp for the blues, and the harmonized A. And this was on your little book there, the second diagram. And then, so notice I'm not moving my index. It doesn't matter if that third string is dead or not, really. You want the A, the A note. All right. And the D, you can do the same thing if you want to mess around. We didn't talk about this, but... It's like a little G chord. But we did talk about this. We talked about... That was the A. So uh, what do we do with the B? We move it up to a B flat. B, that same index finger, and then we go. Now we can't have a bass note with it unless we somehow do take our pinky and get it down on the, on the B over here. And go. But when we go here, we're going to have to drop it. It's kind of hard to get that thing off there. Probably would be a way to do it. Forget about it. I'm going to forget about it. So just take the fourth, third, and second strings. And we talked about chord, quote, fragments, unquote, even though it's a full chord. Uh, the, the people who play guitar because they're not playing something on all six strings call it a chord fragment. All right. And that position right there, this is now on the fourth fret for B, is named after the third string. So that's third string at the fourth fret is a B. So this lick is in B. Now if we move it up one, that third string is a C. So then we are playing this lick in C. And if I move it up one more fret, I'm in C sharp or D flat. If I move it up one more, I'm in D. So now I can use this for a D. Sounds a lot like this one, doesn't it? So wherever you move that up, if I move it up from the 7th to the ninth fret, the 3rd string of the ninth fret is the same as the open E string, so this is an E at the ninth fret. And I think that's about it, wasn't it? Yeah. Okay, stop there. We can